Howdy again everyone, and today I'm very pleased to present to you one of Canon's newest RF lenses, which is only for their full-frame mirrorless EOS R cameras, the RF 70-200mm f2.8 LIS USM. It's $2,700 in the US, or two and a half grand here in the UK. Very, very expensive, even for a lens of this type. Now, a 70-200mm f2.8 lens is pretty much mandatory for any burgeoning camera system that wants to be taken seriously, because they're one of the most useful telephoto zoom lenses in the world, particularly for photojournalists and wedding photographers, giving you a nice little zoom range, combined with a fairly bright maximum aperture that can stop action in darker situations, and get you some very out of focus backgrounds, particularly when you're zoomed in all the way. Canon have promised that their new RF lenses will have extra little features that make them stand out from their counterparts for digital SLRs, and this lens is no exception at all. Even a beginner photographer will probably see right away that this lens extends when zooming, meaning it can collapse down to be much smaller than Canon's normal EF 70-200mm lenses. When using the lens on your camera, you get used to that immediately, and it's quite a bonus I reckon, the lens takes up far less space in your camera bag as a result, and you feel a bit more inconspicuous using it. Another bonus is that this lens is lighter than Canon EF mount equivalents, at just over a kilogram it's about 70% the weight of those older lenses, and part of that is that Canon have used a simpler optical formula for it, with fewer glass elements inside, but those glass elements seem to be very high quality. And this new RF lens has a couple of other neat advantages too. It can focus down to 70 centimeters, far closer than other 70 to 200 millimeter lenses, and it also has a newly designed hood and one of Canon's customizable control rings at the back. Nice. It also has two of Canon's excellent Nano USM focus motors driving the autofocus system, which should yield some lightning fast results. We'll see about that in a second. But generally, the lens's build quality is awesome, as you'd expect. The barrel is made of high quality engineering plastic that feels nice and solid to touch. There are lots of nice subtle design touches which add to the feeling of quality. The lens is based on a metal lens mount with a weather sealing gasket, as you would expect at this price level. Canon advertised that the lens is generally very well weather sealed, although obviously it's not completely waterproof. At the rear, we also find one of Canon's customizable control rings, which can be set in your camera to do almost anything. It's in a natural position for changing aperture though, if that's what floats your boat. Then comes the very solid feeling tripod mount, which is, well it's just a tripod mount really. Next comes the focus ring, which is rubberized and turns really smoothly. It's electronically coupled to the lens's focus motors, and it responds perfectly to your control, exactly like it would if it were mechanically connected. When it comes to focus breathing, at 200mm, the lens zooms out just a little as you focus more closely. Zoom out to 70mm, and that focus breathing is a little more noticeable, so that'll be a mild disappointment to some video makers. My analysis of the lens's autofocus system is simple, it's perfect. The two nano USM motors work unbelievably fast and accurately every time. That is one of the reasons this lens is so expensive. The autofocus makes the tiniest of clicking sounds when shooting in stills mode, but it's barely audible. When you're shooting in video mode, the autofocus slows down a bit, as you can see here, so that no sound is registered on your camera's microphone. Perfect. Next, we have the zoom ring. It's rubberized and turns fairly smoothly, although you can get them a little better damped than this. The lens barrel extends as you're zoomed in, uh, but it feels nice and solid, it doesn't wobble around at all. I should mention that this lens has very good image stabilization in three modes. Here's some footage with it turned off, and it's now turned on to mode one. As you can see, it takes a moment to kick in properly, and then it holds your image nice and steady. You should use mode one nearly all the time. Use mode two if you're panning while shooting, 
and mode 3 stabilizes your image only at the moment you take the picture, which can help you to frame a subject that's moving erratically, but basically, you'll just be using mode 1 most of the time. The lens has a 77mm filter thread and comes with a lovely, newly designed hood which snaps firmly in place and has a hole to adjust your filters through. All in all, the lens's build quality is absolutely perfect and I can't think of a single way it could have been improved really. Well, let's move on and look at image quality. I'm testing it on a Canon EOS R, the highest resolution of Canon's RF mount cameras available at the time of making this review. Let's start at 70mm. Straight from f2.8, resolution and contrast in the middle of the image are perfect, and the corners, very slightly softer, but still great. All you have to do is top down to f4, and you'll see resolution in the corners going up again to virtually perfect levels. It's tased this sharp down to f11, where the effects of diffraction begin to soften the image slightly. Oddly enough, this lens can stop all the way down to a very dark f32, but as you can see, the diffraction there makes that kind of aperture unusably soft. Well, let's zoom in about halfway now to 120mm. Again, the lens is razor sharp in the middle, straight from f2.8. And over in the corners, it's the same story as at 70mm, very mildly softer at f2.8, very sharp at f4, and perfect at f5.6. And again, the corners stay this sharp down to f11. And finally, let's zoom into 200mm. Again, the lens is razor sharp in the middle of your images with great contrast, and once again, the corners are mildly softer, getting a little sharper at f4 and f5.6. So, overall, the lens offers great resolution and biting contrast throughout the entire zoom range. The corners are generally very sharp, but they do benefit further from a little stopping down, so it's not a completely perfect performance here, technically, but it's an excellent one nonetheless. Ok, let's look at distortion and vignetting. At 70mm and f2.8, we only see mild barrel distortion and vignetting. Stop down to f4 or f5.6 to see those corners brighten up. Zoom into around 90mm and that distortion straightens out. Zoom all the way into 200mm to see just some mild pincushion distortion. But the image corners are pretty dark at f2.8 there though. Stop down to f4 or f5.6 and those corners brighten up dramatically. So, it's a fairly average performance for distortion and vignetting here, keep those corrections turned on. As I mentioned before, this lens can focus as closely as 70cm to your subject, brilliant really, and much closer than usual for a lens of this class. Close up image quality at f2.8 is fine, but the contrast is a little ghostly, stop down to f4 and we see perfection again. Now let's take a look at how well the lens performs against bright lights. It's a fairly average performance here, not too bad. We can see some flaring, but it's fairly soft, and we get some loss of contrast, but mostly only when bright lights are directly in your picture. So it's not too bad, but nothing special here. Let's take a look at the quality of this lens's bokeh. 70 to 200 mm lenses never guarantee you an easy ride in this department, but with this RF lens, your outer focus backgrounds will virtually always look beautifully smooth, or well, they did in my tests anyway. That really is wonderful to see. And related to bokeh is longitudinal chromatic aberration. At f2.8, your bokeh highlights will have a little blue tint to them beyond the plane of focus and yellow before. Stop down to f4 though, and it's already mostly under control. Well then, overall, I'll try to explain to you the pleasing sensation that using this lens on your Canon EOS R gives you, here goes. It's like doing a really big sneeze, while simultaneously driving over a humpback bridge, which is to say, a very pleasurable sensation indeed. The lens is just a masterpiece really, and I absolutely love Canon's decision to make it extend and collapse upon zooming, that makes it far more portable, especially on a smaller mirrorless camera, and it feels far less conspicuous in use. Everything about it works perfectly, the lightning fast autofocus, the good image stabilisation, and the lens's low weight and balanced handling. Everything about its image quality is also very sharp and pleasing, and I especially like that it can focus as closely as 70cm. 
Admittedly, it's possible that the corner image quality could have been slightly sharper at f2.8, but you'll be having so much fun shooting with the lens and getting those corners as out of focus as possible that no one in their right mind will really care. In common with most of Canon's other RF mirrorless camera lenses, you have to pay a huge amount of money for the privilege of using the RF 70-200mm f2.8, but it also shares the same brilliant image quality of the rest of that lens family, combined with neat features, and so I can highly recommend it without a moment's hesitation.